Hi everyone, welcome to the Pills Connect YouTube channel. Today we are kicking off a new series for the fellowship application season. My name is Marissa Brooks. I am head of video content communications for Pills. Previously, I completed a fellowship with ASHP and now I serve as a wellness pharmacist. In today's series, we'll be covering all sorts of information about fellowship application process, um, in this series, you can also expect to see some do's and don'ts for CVs, interview prep, and lots of other things. So make sure you stay tuned for the next videos to come. And today specifically, we're going to be talking about how to find these opportunities in the, as a pharmaceutical industry fellowship or an entry level job. And we'll be talking about this with my two colleagues who have been through the process themselves. So go ahead and give yourself an introduction. If Yanni, you want to go ahead and take off. Sure. Thank you, Marissa, and yay to being an awesome wellness pharmacist. Uh, my name is Yanni Aderi. I am the liver health medical liaison for Nova Nordisk and also um, the head for classroom and career for pharmacy initiative leaders. Really glad to be here with you all today. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Tola Akinoye, and I am the director of the Pills Protege program, also a first year fellow at Sanofi. So also happy to be here. I'm glad to have you guys here today. So to get started, let's go ahead and just dive into some questions that we hear from a lot of pharmacy students and potential candidates for fellowship programs. So what are some of the more well-known pharmaceutical industry fellowship programs that are out there? Okay, so let's start with the, I would call them school conjoined fellowships. So these are fellowships that are in conjunction with pharmaceutical, pharma, pharma, pharmacy schools, sorry. So this would be Rutgers University, MCPHS, Northeastern, FAMU. Those are the more common ones and the more uh, bigger ones at a bigger scale. But of course, there are also smaller ones, just, just um, pharmacy schools in conjunction with multiple different pharmaceutical industry. So they partner up to create that fellowship. So they get the professional development component or a master's component. And they also get that on hands pharmacy or pharmaceutical industry experience too. So those are just the top ones that I just named. Yeah, like for example, Nova Nordisk also has a fellowship program. So a lot of companies have their own specific fellowship programs like Eli Lilly have Visiting Scientist Fellowship. Nova Nordisk has multiple fellowships, not just in medical affairs, but also in market development and um, HUR, as well as um, in mo medical information. Um, so I think there's a lot of smaller companies um, that also have their own fellowship programs. I think it's a matter of just in simple terms, Googling fellowship programs for PharmDs. Um, and another thing I would say is being really, and I know we'll go into the, on, into this a little bit in depth, but being on LinkedIn and um, keeping an eye out for people who post fellowships really late in the game as well. Really late meaning post um, January, February timeframe of the year after um, the mid-year happened. So that's what I would add. That kind of goes into my next question is, is there like a centralized place where you can find this information about the different types of fellowships that are available? Uh, good question. Um, so things, times have changed since ASHP and of course COVID kind of changed the dynamic of fellowships. Before it used to be everything was in PPS, um, everything was centralized at ASHP mid-year, but now it's a bit more diverse. Um, again, just like LinkedIn, um, just I said, just like Yanni kind of said about LinkedIn, it's very important to kind of hone in on that. Um, there's There are ways to see and understand where the fellowships are deriving from. So LinkedIn is your major point of contact because a lot of fellows and a lot of company employees are posting about these fellowships. So I would say LinkedIn would be your best bet. Um, also making sure that you're, you're, you're signing up for a lot of these um, emails requests. I know Rucker said, does that for a lot of their potential candidates. So they're you putting your email and you get these email conf confirmations and you get newsletters every now and again. So you get what's going on. MCPHS does the same thing. And a lot of other pharmacy, um, pharmaceutical industry um, fellowships are doing the same thing. So I feel like these are things that you got to get yourself involved in. You only get what you put in. So you have to like put in the work so you can be able to get what you you're looking for. And it's a lot of grinding. So we don't have like a central place for fellowship. Yeah, I think I, when I was a P4, I actually like subscribed to IPHO. I think they had an email that would come out every now and then when there'd be like new positions posted to. So that's another place you could look. Um, 
do you have any recommendations for like keywords or things that a candidate should, should search for in terms of trying to find these particular programs? Because I know a lot of them are called different things, but like, do you have any, like, I guess, advice for someone who's looking for these and how do they, where do they start? Um, yeah, sure. So I wanted to kind of hone in on what you just kind of talked about right now about IPHO. IPHO is big on that. I mean, it is a pharmaceutical organization, so they do list all of the majority of the programs on there, especially with them being in partnership with a lot of these programs. But keywords, it, it, I feel as though you would have to understand the types of functional areas that are out there for you to kind of figure out what keywords would be. Um, there's a lot of company lingo as well. So looking into things that are like, for example, an MSL, even you put in that simple search into LinkedIn, you can have a lot of things that could pop up job wise, also fellowship wise. IPHO, same thing, you can input that and kind of also not only get um, the fellowships or jobs, but you actually get a nice description or little um, synapses, I would say, of the experiences some of these fellowship fellows are having or people who are in this job description are also having. So uh, start with something that some functional area names, like you have medical affairs, you have HERR, so that would be health economics and outcomes research. Start big, and then when you start to see a lot of words that you see consistent along the line, you start to manipulate them. So for example, for HEOR, you start to see real word evidence. Then you start to realize, let me utilize real word evidence as a search term. For medical affairs, you see a lot of KOLs. You, you start to wonder, especially as a P4, you're trying to understand the terminology and the verbiage, right? So that would be key opinion leaders. You start to key opinion leader fellowships or anything orientated around that that those keywords right there. So this just a uh, start big and then kind of see where the consistency is and then go from there. Yeah, I think I would totally agree with what Tola said in addition to that as well. And to also touch on previously about the central location, um, it's tough to say, I think, besides the big ones that Tola mentioned, a specific location, but it always is a good idea to go to the company website that you're interested in working for. So if you're interested in a particular disease area, and you want to work for that company, it's, it would serve you well to go on that website and check to see if they also have fellowship. They usually post it in the same board as they would their jobs. So it's that it's that really simple. And then um, I think Tolis mentioned great points, having specific um, terms to look for fellowship specifically in, in, in functional areas is important. A lot of them you could just simply, I mean, I can't emphasize the value of Google and uh, LinkedIn. It really is that simple. If you think about it, you can go to pages three, four to find some things, but you will literally find it by searching the functional area and fellowships for PharmD. And one addition that I would add to Google, again, I'm sure most people know this already, but by clicking on the time and adding the range to be within the last year. So you're not getting, um, you know, old fellowships or opening old brochures for programs that no longer are specific things. So I would say um, changing the time frame on there would probably be the best way to get you relevant and detailed information for the fellowship programs. That's a really good tip. Um, how would you say a fellowship compares to an entry level position? I know you mentioned they're kind of usually posted in the same area, but like what can someone get out of a fellowship versus just entering right into a, an entry level position in pharma? The, this is a controversial question, um, <laughs> but I would say that uh, the, uh, there's there's um, pros and cons to both sides, right? So getting a fellowship, you're you're getting paid to technically be a student again and understand a lot of the fundamentals and then advancements and things like that during the your fellowship, right? You know, you want to gain as much information as possible, gain as much knowledge, especially coming from a pharmacy school that maybe you weren't as exposed to industry or you had a keen interest in industry, but there's not a lot of teachings around that. It's not clinical focused. So it kind of gives you that opportunity to kind of grow. But with a job, your, your priority for that company is to do your job. So a lot of the things that you have to do is you have to kind of seek your own opportunities out. You have to put in the work again. You could only put in what you could get out, right? So you you want to go ahead and seek out those opportunities and be a part of different initiatives so that you can build your rapport. Now, being in a fellowship is not is there's not a completely tied bond, but some people do get those experiences and 
take them out of that fellowship and they get quick advancements. Some believe that having a job, it, it takes a little bit more time to get to where you want to be. So this could be whether a hierarchy in name, so it'd be associate director or director, but it, it takes time to kind of get to those to those um, positions. But again, it's all about who you know, not what you know sometimes. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a bit of a strategic game that you have to play. All of this boils down to knowing who you are as a person, right? If you know that you need that time to grow, you need a bit of teaching, a bit of coaching, I feel like fellowship would be the right position for you. If you feel as though that you pick things up fairly quickly, um, you understand what you need to do, your functional area, you have a, a big understanding of it, like a completely like overview of what you need to do, the job could also be for you as well. So it's a controversial question. People try to ask all the time, should I get a job? Should I get a fellowship? I always encourage um, everyone to apply to both. You just never know what comes hand in hand. I apply to both myself. So that's just my my take on it. Absolutely. I think she hit it right on the head. Um, I would just add that and in, in what makes the fellowship that experience that you feel like you're learning a lot more is also because you have built in time. Usually fellowships are like, 70% work, 30% professional development, meaning you have a specific time on your actual job a lot allotted time you have to spend time networking, to spend time building relationships, to spend time learning about other functional areas. It's easier when you're in a fellowship to say, I'm curious to pick up a project in market access, but I'm in medical affairs. So what can I do? Your manager is more likely to say, yes, go ahead and talk to people and network in that market. You know, you're in managed markets, but I mean, you're in medical affairs, but go to market access and see if you can do that. That's a commercial medical role, right? Separate areas. But that is more possible in a uh, fellowship than it is a job. With job, you have certain metrics you have to meet. Um, sometimes you're, you stepping away from your job to do those things could really be defined as short-term assignments or extended programs or whatever it is. It's not necessarily that you have an assigned time within your job to actually step out and take on projects. So, um, and you know, you're getting paid full salary in your job, meaning you're expected to perform at that full salary capacity. You're expected to contribute to the business bottom line, just fellowship are as well. But I think that you have a little bit of more of that. And then I think that people are, I would say my company and maybe I'm biased is very open door, even virtually. But I think that to say I'm a fellow looking to learn more is a lot more opening. Like it's just, you know, people are more open to, to giving you more information. So on top of what everything Tola said, it's also the structure of the program, actually having time for you to go and network. That makes it a little bit different than an entry level job. But to be honest, we're seeing more and more people who start with entry level jobs. And as long as you have the drive and you're intentional about where you want to end up with the right network, you can get to where you want to get to too. So don't, you know, don't let that limit you and don't let it be a very stressful situation trying to pick between the two either. Awesome. Sounds good. And for somebody who wants to go right into pharma as an entry level uh, type of position, what like recommendation do you have on, on how to find a position like that? Connection, connection, connection. Um, this is where you have to maximize a lot on connecting on LinkedIn. I know the way I found the MS, because I, I applied to a few MSL roles at the time, um, was to connect with a few MSLs at the time too, and seeing if there's any open positions. There's a lot of recruiters connect with them. Um, this is solely focused on those who are interested in pharma coming out of pharmacy school. Um, you have to kind of build your network if you haven't haven't already. So that's that's really big. Um, also experience. So if you're going into an entry level job, not to say, to make you, I would say, a better candidate or a more robust candidate, having some kind of industry experience, whether it be an internship or rotation, can also, you know, give you a bit of a push, right? Because you've been exposed to that area, especially if you're applying to that functional area. Um, and if you're at those rotations, use them to your advantage. Use your appy rotations or whatever internships that you're, you are in to your advantage and ask around where what are positions available is this position that i'm working or in in this internship available have communications have open dialogue constant open dialogue so this is just some things i would say uh anyone should kind of look towards when they're looking for an entry level um yanni i'm sure you can fill in where, where needed i think you actually hit it right on the head honestly i don't have much to add awesome well, it sounds like there's a lot of really like robust like resources and places to look for these type of opportunities. 
So we'll definitely dive in a little bit more in our next video where we talk about how to utilize LinkedIn during this process. So before we get into that, I just wanted to say thank you so much, Yanni and Tola, for joining us today. And for everyone watching, thanks for um, taking some time to learn more about the fellowship process and make sure to stay tuned with our next video in the series.